All right, starting a brand new chapter, new section, new examples. Here we are going to be going into rational expressions and functions. And uh, we're going to be adding them, subtracting them, multiplying, dividing. We're going to do complex fractions, and then we'll get into some application problems. So all the nice fun for uh, chapter six here. All right, great. So um, what we're going to start with here on this first example is we're going to be given a rational expression. It's rational because it's a fraction. Okay, that's what a rational number is. And it's an expression because we have variables involved. All right. And so basically all we need to do here is just find out, um, give the domain. I mean, if you were to graph this right here, uh, what are the what are the x values that are used to, to graph this? And, and the way that you kind of do this here is you just say, well, what value does it not include? Okay, so as we know, every fraction um, can I have a zero in, in the denominator, right? So we so what we want to find out is when is the de, when is the denominator zero? Okay, and we're going to use what we learned about factoring. And if I factor this. Right, so this is going to be x minus uh, 5 times x plus 1. Uh, x plus 1 equals 0. If I, uh, if, I, if I factor this, is what we get right here. Okay, um, and so now, well, what values makes this 0? So that means I set each factor equal to 0. So I have x minus 5 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. So if I solve for both of these, I have x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. So what this means is if, if um, x was 5, that would make the denominator 0. All right, 5 squared is 25 minus 4 times 5 is 20. So 25 minus 20 is 5 and then minus 5 is 0, right? And then same thing with negative 1. If I plug in negative 1, that would make the denominator 0. So if you look at what does this look like graphically, check this out, and then I'll bring it all together to getting our, our answer. Um, I always love Desmos, so you know I'm a big fan of that. So if you're, if you're going to graph anything, I'm always going to go to desmos.com and graph it. Um, so this is what the, the graph looks like right here, some funky looking thing going on here. But here's the main point. Okay, The, the point is, is that we had an x value right here at negative 1 and an x value of 5. And so basically these lines, um, it will never touch f 5, right? If you look at this graph right here, it kind of just keeps going up and up and up. If you were to zoom out, um, see if I can do that right here. If you were to zoom out, I know gra graphically it looks like it touches 5, but it it's never going to touch 5 right here. It's going to get closer and closer and closer to five but but it really never does i mean if, if i were to keep zooming in uh, it would just keep getting closer and closer so basically what this means is this is that look at this uses every x value to graph except negative one and five okay so going back over here i wanted to show that to you graphically we would say that our domain you could write it different ways you can say it's um all real numbers that's the symbol for all real numbers. It's kind of like a sorry looking one. Let's try that again. It's two vertical lines and then you kind of do this little R thing, okay? So it's all real numbers, meaning every X value except um, X equals five and negative one, okay? Uh, but probably when you put this into to my math lab, you probably, they want it in a different way. So the way that they probably want you to do it is like this, is you're gonna go from negative infinity to negative one, and then you're gonna do union, uh, negative one to uh, five, and then union uh, from five to uh, infinity. So what this is saying, and this probably makes more sense when you look at it graphically. Um, see right here, it goes from negative infinity way over here, it keeps going, and then it stops at, at negative one. So it's everything here, and then it's everything in between negative one and five. It, okay, so it's everything in between and then starting back at five to infinity. So graphically, you can kind of see that right there. And so that's why we write it like this and we use the union symbol. Um, and lastly, uh, we don't use brackets right here. We use parentheses because it never reaches negative one, right? Because if you were to plug in negative one, 
then now you would have an undefined number right here. So that's why we don't use brackets. We only use parentheses, right? So, so that would be the, the domain for that one. Um, coming over here now to uh, part B. Uh, same thing, when is this gonna be zero? Well, it's actually never, and I'll show you why. When is this zero? Well, if I subtract one, uh, 2x squared um, equals negative one. And then if I divide both sides by two, so get x squared equals negative a half. And then if I take the square root of both sides, that's where our problem comes in, is the square root of a negative number, right? Which you can't take that. Um, we're not talking about imaginary numbers here. And we're only doing real numbers. And so you can't take the square root of a negative number. I'm sorry, yeah, of a negative number at all. And so this that tells us that the domain then is all real numbers. It's every single x value. And just to show that to you graphically, uh, let me show that to you right here. Let's get this back over here. Pull that back out. Get rid of that one, and let's do the, the second one. And that's what it looks like. It just kind of does this little whoopsie, and then it goes back down like a little roller coaster, and it will use every x value. Okay, so that's that.